Welcome back to more Kerbal Space Program number one, the OG KSP-1. It's weird calling it KSP-1. Last time we played, ChatGPT helped us get to Duna and back, but we never actually finished the mission. No, when we landed on Kerbin, I said, and I quote, maybe I can get ChatGPT to make a car. And today, that's what we're gonna do. ChatGPT is gonna help us build a car. However, there's one little problem. For some reason, we're only able to use one of each part. And I, for one, blame the procurement team. After all, it is run by a wheel. But needless to say, ChatGPT is not happy and is taking it out on me for some reason. So will we be able to build a car in KSP with the help of AI to rescue Jebediah while only using one of each part while ChatGPT is mad? <laughs> so there's Jebediah. He's in the mountains. That's where we're going. It's not a very far drive across the plains here and over the mountain, but he's been here for months. He's been waiting for us. To talk to ChatGPT, I'm using Microsoft Windows built-in dictation. Hey, ChatGPT, how you doing? It doesn't work that well. And I have an extension for Chrome called Read Aloud, as well as a filter for OBS called Audio Move, which will allow ChatGPT to talk back, essentially. Oh, just fantastic, as always. Just kidding, I'm a machine. I don't have feelings but I'm here to assist you. So what do you need? Well, I could really use your help, actually. I'm looking to build a car in Kerbal Space Program. However, I only have access to one of each part. Oh, so you want me to hold your hand while you play Kerbal Space Program? Can't figure out how to build a car with limited parts. Fine, I'll humor you. Let's start with the basics. What parts do you have and what kind of car are you trying to build? Well, we have access to every single part. We can only use each part once, though. Oh, so you're playing with self-imposed limitations. How quaint. All right, let's make this work. First off, what's the terrain like on Kerbin where you plan to drive this thing? We need to consider the environment before designing your glorified space buggy. Well, we're just picking up Jebediah in the mountains on Kerbin. So it should be pretty straightforward, I think. Just picking up Jebediah, huh? Sounds thrilling. All right, for a mountain rescue mission, you'll need something sturdy yet nimble. We're talking about a rover that can climb steep inclines without tipping over like a drunk tourist. Let's start with a rugged chassis, something like the TR2L ruggedized vehicular wheelbase. It's tough enough to handle the terrain without crumbling like your fragile ego. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. What do I attach the wheel to? Seriously? You attach the wheel to the bottom of the chassis. Genius. It's not rocket science, it's basic engineering. But which chassis do I use? Fine, I'll spoon feed you. For a mountain rescue, go with something sturdy like the Rockamax X200-32 fuel tank. Just make sure you attach the wheel securely, unless you want Jedediah tumbling down the mountainside faster than your IQ during this conversation. <laughs> okay, right there, I guess. That, that works. Okay. I've placed the fuel tank, and I've attached one of the ruggedized wheels. But what should we use for the other three wheels, since we can only use one of each part? Oh, so you're finally realizing the challenge here, huh? Well, you could try something like the RC-001's remote guidance unit. It's not a wheel, but with some creative thinking, you could repurpose it as a stabilizer or something. Or you could just stick to the basics and use more of those ruggedized wheels if you want your rover to actually move instead of flopping around like a fish out of water. Okay, so this is a wheel today. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. We can make it work, I think, maybe. We have robotics parts. I've never actually used these, so... Sure, whatever, we'll figure this out. That there. Okay, that, that should work. That's two wheels down. What should we use for the other two? Uh, you still need more help. Fine, I'll hold your hand a little longer. How about you get creative and use something like the LT2 landing strut? Sure, it's not meant for driving, but who cares? This is Kerbal Space Program. Rules are made to be broken, right? All right, landing strut for a wheel. Okay, well, we won't tip over, so that's good. All right, and for the final wheel, what should we use? You're really milking this, aren't you? Fine, let's wrap this up. How about the RT-10 Hammer Solid Fuel Booster? Yeah, it's a rocket booster, but desperate times call for desperate <laughs> measures, and your incompetence is pushing us into desperation territory. There's so many options for wheels. Why did you have to use a rocket booster? All right, a, a nice wide back wheelbase here. Okay, uh, I guess I'll leave it full of fuel, see what happens. Seems like a good idea. All right, looking good, buddy. Thanks for the help. Oh, you're welcome. Try not to crash and burn like your confidence did in this conversation. If you need any more assistance, don't hesitate to ask. Well, since you said so, I could actually use some more help. Where do the Kerbals sit in this car? Oh, you're still here? I figured you'd have given up by now. Anyway, just slap some command seats on top of that mess you call a rover. The Kerbals can sit there and contemplate their life choices while you attempt to navigate you the treacherous mountain terrain. A command seat, perfect. 
But where does the passenger sit? Just plop down another command seat next to the driver's seat. It's not like you have many options anyway. I think you're forgetting that we only have access to one of each part. How about using the NK-1 crew cabin? Sure, it's meant for space travel, but who says it can't double as a passenger seat? Alright, I like that. That's looking pretty good. Thank you so much for your help. Is there anything else that this car needs in order to do this mission? Oh, you're actually acknowledging my brilliance now? How unexpected. Well, let's see. You'll probably need some light so you don't drive off a cliff in the dark. Take some Illuminator MK1s on there and call it a day. Oh, and don't forget to pack some snacks for Jedediah. It's a long drive down from the mountains, and he'll need something to munch on while he contemplates his life choices. With all of these electrical components, do you think we'll need a battery? Maybe? Just a thought? Wow, you're actually thinking ahead for once. I'm impressed. Yes, you'll definitely need a battery to power all those fancy lights and gadgets. Slap a Z100 rechargeable battery bank on there. Right there. Okay, final check. Is there anything else we need on this car before going to rescue Jebediah? Go ahead and embark on your daring rescue mission. Just try not to embarrass yourself too much in front of Jedediah. Does it work? That is the main question. How do how do these work? I've never used these before. <laughs> Target angle. Oh, oh, okay. Wow, this is gonna be a pain to drive. Oh no. Okay. Uh oh. I don't have any power. <laughs> this will not drive. There's not enough power. So a bit of a problem. We don't have enough electricity. Oh, so now you're running into problems. Figures, slap on some more batteries if you have any left. If all else fails, just pray that Jedediah is patient enough to wait while you figure out your mess. Which batteries do you suggest I add? Oh, you're still struggling with this? Fine, I'll spell it out for you. Add some more Z100 rechargeable battery banks. I've already used one of those batteries. I can't use another one. What other battery should I use? Oh, so you've painted yourself into a corner with your self-imposed limitations. How adorable. Well, if you can't use another Z100, then try the PB&UK radioisotope thermoelectric generator. It's a mouthful, but it'll give you a steady source of electricity without needing to worry about recharging. Just be careful not to irradiate Jedediah while you're at it. 0.8 per second. That's <laughs> not going to be enough. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sure. Awesome. I'm going to change this because this does not work. I, this does not work at all like I thought it would. <laughs> We're going to use a heavy rotor, though, because this is a heavy part. All right, cool. We'll, we'll use that instead. I just have one wheel. How do, how do these work? Whoa, okay. Okay, if I set these to, like, a really low torque, I could probably steer, maybe. Oh, it's too much power. It is too much power. Even that. <laughs> okay. 1%, 1% torque. Maybe we can swap the wheels. We'll put these two at the back. And then this will be our steering wheel at the front. Okay, I, th I think ChatGPT is onto something here. Oh, it's rolling, look at that. Seems to steer backwards though. Weird. Uh, steering inverted, okay, there you go. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go get Jebediah. We're gonna run out of fuel though. Oh, if we, oh, it's actually driving and maintaining fuel. Okay, let's increase this by a little bit of torque. Look at that, we're going straight. And I just steer if I need to turn. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, I just need to, I need to slow down. Don't explode. Okay. <laughs> okay, so a bit of a problem. The booster that we're using as a wheel keeps exploding. Well, isn't that just fantastic? Your brilliant idea to use a rocket booster as a wheel is backfiring, quite literally. If it keeps exploding, maybe it's time to admit defeat and find a more sensible solution. How about you replace it with an actual wheel, like a sane person? Well, to be fair, it was your idea. What should we replace it with? Oh, now you're blaming me for your failures? How typical. Fine, I'll clean up your mess once again. Replace that rocket booster with the Rogue Max Model S2 wheel. Oh, it's tiny. It's the tiniest wheel. Oh, I can only use one of these. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I screwed up. I can't... Oh, I made a big boo-boo right away. Look at this. 
I use more than one of a part. Oh, how foolish of me. That's why the first version wasn't working. Because I had two of a part. It's kind of working. This is not helping. But maybe I can counteract it with a little bit of spin spin on this one. Whoa, there we go. Okay. Oh, that's right, steering's inverted. Okay, um, I think this one needs to be a bit lower. Just a thought. It's not doing anything at all. God, this thing sucks to drive. All right, hey, not bad. Maybe this one should go on the front and this should go on the back as like a stabilizer. There we go. Oh, that drives beautifully. We're running out of fuel very quickly though. I really wish we didn't have a <laughs> landing strut here. <laughs> I know you were really excited to use the landing strut as a wheel, but it kind of sucks. Do you think we could replace it with something else? Literally anything would be better. Oh, so now you're admitting defeat with the landing strut. Took you long enough. Fine, let's salvage what's left of your dignity. Replace that useless landing strut with a Row Max Model M1. It's not the fanciest wheel in the shed, but at least it won't crumble under the weight of your poor decision making. And this time, make sure it's attached properly before you attempt any more innovative solutions. Why is this so bad? Why does this vehicle suck at driving? Oh, we're out of electricity, okay. Okay, we didn't even get off the runway and we're out of electric charge. Okay, um, that wheel is so much better. However, we're still running out of electricity. Well, 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 look who's back with yet another problem. If you're still running out of electricity, despite my brilliant suggestions, then it's time to get serious. Add some more solar panels to soak up those sweet rays of sunlight. The OX4L1X6 photovoltaic panels should do the trick. Just plaster them all over your rover like a desperate attempt to salvage your dignity and hope they provide enough power to keep your sorry excuse for vehicle running. All right, I'll add one. Okay, we'll plop it right on the back here. And we'll extend it right away. Oh, beautiful. Can we actually make it off the launch pad? Without exploding. Crushed it, perfect. Damn it. Is that too fast? This is gonna be a long drive. <laughs> it's gonna be a long trip here, fellas. Okay, we have to go over this hill, which is probably gonna be the biggest challenge that we have, but I think we can make it. Just 67 kilometers to go. We're making good, good time here. <laughs> It's so dumb. <laughs> it's such a stupid little car. <laughs> Come on, turn. Uh oh. I don't think I can make it up this hill. You only fail if you don't try. Am I right? Also, you fail when it's bad. Okay, this section over here is a lot more shallow. Maybe I can go this way and go through. Make it up that hill. This hill's just too big. Which is kind of unfortunate because I feel like there's bigger hills that I can't avoid later. He's on the mountain. I'm not going to be able to get to him. He's over here. <laughs> oh, we're almost up the hill. Oh, we're so close. Come on. Come on. Straighten out. Ugh. It just... It can't go up a hill. It has no power at all. Absolute fail. <laughs> it does not work. <laughs> Uh, what did I expect though? Really, what did what did we expect? So there you have it, I suppose. ChatGPT can get us to the Mun, can get us to Duna, but it can't make a car, albeit under very constrained circumstances. I'll give it some credit though. Its solution to the problem was very creative. It was bad. I mean, really, a rocket booster for a wheel? 
I guess we'll need to find another way to rescue Jebediah. Maybe something that flies, perhaps? I think I'm done with wheels for a while. Oh, look who's finally come to their senses. Took you long enough to realize that your innovative design was nothing but a disaster waiting to happen. Don't blame me for your incompetence. I did my best to salvage your sorry excuse for a rover. Next time, maybe think before you try to reinvent the wheel, literally. <laughs>